This is the plaintiff, Ina Goss. She says she ran her ex-boyfriend's vape shop while he was away at rehab for alcohol abuse. And the guy is refusing to pay her for all her hard work. He even had her dragged out of the shop in handcuffs by the cops because she was yelling at him to pay her. Bottom line, the defendant owes her $5,000 for all her hard work. And she's here in the name of justice, suing him for just that. This is the defendant, Brenton Chambers. He says the plaintiff offered to help him out while he was away getting his life together. But it soon became evident she was acting in her own interests. She took over his vape shop. She was selling merchandise and pocketing the cash. She never paid rent. Now he owes the landlord 3,000 bucks. Oh, her money? Ha! He's accused of causing a relationship to go up in smoke. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff ran her ex-boyfriend's vape shop while he was in rehab and he's refusing to pay her. The defendant says the plaintiff offered to help for no dough. It's the case of Kabong. Thank you, Douglas. Ina Goss, you are suing Brenton Chambers and the Vapor Chamber of Connecticut, I guess? Yes. Uh, represented here by Brenton Chambers, the owner, for $5,000 in unpaid wages. What's going on? Yes. Well, what happened was when Mr. Chambers first ended up ill, um, I offered to help him out. Let's and back up. How do you two know each other? Um, we were dating. You were dating? How long had you been dating? Over a year. Okay. And uh, were you living together? Yes. All right. And then when you say when he got ill, how did what happened to you? Well, basically, I just decided to quit drinking, and I just quit cold turkey, and from there went to the hospital, and from there went to get help from um, recovery. And when you went to the hospital, Just did you quit. get into seizure? What, what happened? Yes, yes, okay. I had a seizure, yes. All right. So you decide you're going to rehab, good for you, and have you stayed sober? Yes, I have. How long? It's been seven and a half months now. Good for you. And um, he goes into rehab, and then the two of you have a discussion about a shop that you own, which is, what is it? It's a vapor shop. Um, it's for, like, you know, selling vapes and stuff like that. Okay, by vapor, what do you mean? Those vape pens where yes, you the pens smoke different... And things yes, and you what uh, what was the agreement the agreement that if I was to help him that he would make me half owner and we were also together at the time so I said okay and we would handle paperwork when he got out you know the only thing that I've done the whole time was make sure all the bills are paid all of his bills including his car payment um, the light bill the rent was paid the and rent for where for the store all right, now he submitted into evidence several yes. texts from the landlord saying he wasn't paid, that he, w he was paid some, but he w he, that there was like 2,000 something um, dollars worth yes. of rent unpaid. Yes, 3,000. So what rent were you paying? I was paying the rent every month. How um, much was the rent? The rent was 800 a month. Okay, how many months were you gone? Around like three and a half months maybe. Wow. He was also behind before he went into the hospital. Um, he was behind, I want to so say, So how many months May. worth of rent did you pay the landlord? I paid him for at least the two months that I was there. Do you have any proof that you paid it? Um, no, unfortunately, because my phone broke. But what does your phone breaking have to do with proof that you paid rent? How did you pay the rent? In cash? Yes. Don't you have a receipt? I left a lot of that stuff at the store when he had me escorted out in cuffs. Okay, so go on. He had two other stores at the time. He had three stores all together. They were both closing due to non-payment of rent, and we helped move all his stores. Right, all the products? Into, yes. To Into the one store? Right. It was okay. mostly who's furniture. You, you turned around and you looked at the lady with, who's that? Um, she helped me. Who is she, she to you? Witness. She's a friend. A friend. Yes. Okay, come on up. Go ahead. I was privy for the whole thing because Brenton and Ina came to live with me and my husband. Her father died, and things were tough for them, so we let them move in with us. But so my question to you, though, is were you present during their conversation with each other? Did he ever tell you anything about what the arrangement was between the two of them? Um, not that I recall. Okay. All right, so you end up moving the stuff with their help, I guess, into the one store, and what do you do? Right. Um, well, then from there, I kept that one store open for, for the long? time being, for the three months, until he felt better enough. Okay, now are you talking to him and visiting him during those three months? Um, I was until they moved him up to Willimantic. Which is what? Over an hour away. 
Okay, and then were you talking to him or they wouldn't let him communicate? Yeah, but, oh, okay. we were talking. So you're still dating? At Pretty much. He yeah. just came at me with, it was just a big surprise to me. Okay, so what went wrong and how did, what was the first news you had that something was wrong? Oh, uh, he used to complain that I didn't make his full car payment, that I only made the bare minimum, which was a thousand. Okay. He would complain about that. He would ask me to sell my dad's stuff and to put that money back into the store, and I told him that I wasn't going to do that. To sell your dad's yeah. stuff and to put that money into Because my dad has a lot of autograph collectibles that he wanted me to sell at the time to put that money back into the store. In order to do what? To buy more product. How were the sales going? What was going on with the sales while you were running it? Um, I was basically, they were starting to pick up around the time that he called the cops on me. So it was starting to, like, catch back up and be able to pay the bills and everything. During those three months, though, you were behind on the bills, so it wasn't making enough money to pay the bills completely. Right. Okay. So now, he doesn't just go from, I love you, bye, to police officers there. What happens, like, in between that? I don't All know. right, let me hear from you. What is it that happened? All right, so basically, <clears throat> I had four shops. Um, I got to a point in life when I just noticed... You know, I'm drinking too much, I'm partying too much, and I just wanted to change, and I was done with it. So long story short, I went to rehab, and I was talking to her sometimes, and I noticed that when I'm I talked to her... had you been dating her for a year before you went to rehab? Well, yeah, yes, we was talking before, before okay, I went to rehab, yes. Talking is what you and yes, I are dating. doing. Yes, Be there, no mistake, you and I are not dating. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's... What exactly were you doing with her that she thought <laughs> yeah. you were in a relationship yeah, for the last Yeah, talking to dating, year. we call it the same thing, from, but yes, dating. What I'm trying to say is I was going through a lot. Four shops and I had people stealing from me from all the shops. So yeah, I started drinking and stuff like that. You know, I was talking to her, we was going out. And I noticed when I was in rehab, when I talked to her, she get mad. Like when I asked about what's going on with the shop. What's going on with the shop? Ah, she hang up the phone. I, you know, I cannot call back. I cannot call her back because, you know, we cannot use our cell phones. And then, you know, my customers know me. So some of my customers reach out like, yo, who was this guy? Your you cousin know? reaches out to you and tells you what? My customers. Your customers reached yes. out to you and told you what? Told me that, you know, it's somebody else working in my shop. It's Meaning her? No, it's somebody else selling the stuff. There was in my a shop. guy? Yes. Okay. Who was the guy working there? That never happened. Okay, His go friend on. dropped off stuff to help him pay the bills. He I dropped off a friends. bunch of clothes. He gave me a bunch of stuff to sell. I, I had the money. Okay, I, I but did not who's making the friend. money Carol. from those sales? Is Nobody Brenton making the money? Brenton was getting all the money from those sales. Well, when did you give Brenton money? Right, and got the money. How do you think the store stayed open? Okay, well, I don't know, because $2,300 in rent was owed. So that's why yeah. I don't know how the store stayed open. So go ahead. So what happens? So at this point, you know, I'm thinking the same thing. Where's the money going, you know? So I cannot do anything. How much normally would you make off of this store? Usually in a month, probably like $30,000, 25000 so what, while she ran it, did you ever ask her, hey, where's all the money coming? Where's yes. it going? Yes, you know, and what I asked her, just like, what's going on? But she's saying, okay, well, I'm not going to pay the rent unless you make me half owner. Like, okay, no, and now before you went into rehab, did you tell her, I'm going to make you half owner? Dude, all right, everybody's saying help. Oh, I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you. So you help me. She says that she's supposed to get half the business. What do you say she's supposed to get? Nothing, just help you for free, work for no, free? No, no, because I know that she's going to make money. I know it's money. I know that she's going to, you know, she had to pay to eat. She had to pay to get there. I know that money just come through the shop. I trust her to know that she can take what she can take, but I don't try to take everything. So you assumed that she was going to skim? Yeah. <laughs> you got a funny way of doing things. <laughs> so is it a good idea, a bad idea, or just doesn't matter if somebody who is an addict runs a vape shop? I think it's okay. As long as they've gotten help, I think everyone deserves a second chance. What do you say? I feel as if they are two separate issues, um, the two addictions. So I, I guess it's sort of like, would you let a, um, what about an alcoholic working in a bar? Um, I don't think that would be the best idea. What's the difference? Um, alcohol and weed are different things. Like one thing's addictive and one isn't. Fair enough. Not bad. Going inside the courtroom. So where did the money go from all the sales for two months? I went right into buying more product and to paying the bills. I, you're going to have to prove that, product. though, because otherwise it looks like you pocketed it. Let me see anything you want to show me about an accounting of where all the money went. You know, this is not how business records are kept, you know? See, normally I would have 
like there would be a, an organized listing. Otherwise, people are just pocketing cash when they sell stuff. All right, so what happens? How do the police get there? So I just know how to get the cops, because I know if I go over there, the cops will be called. Okay, so what happens? They tell me to stay outside, and they went in. So I, And I what happens go. when the cops walk in? The cops walk in, and they tell me that um, I can't take any of my stuff, even though I tried telling them that I had all the receipts on my phone. Okay. And What's your stuff? All the stuff that I paid for that was in the oh, store. So, okay, so you are then running your business in that shop and taking the profits because it's your stuff. And well, technically, So then at how that are you point, suing for wages if there was never an agreement to pay you wages? Well, how is it we don't just I call this like a he, wash? He owes me something because I, I saved his story for him. Ina, let me just tell you that um, you, you kind of handled this very, very poorly. If somebody offers you a, a business proposition, then you should have it in writing so you can prove what the business proposition is. If what you did was basically go into a venue that's under his name, sell stuff and pocket it, then I guess you did exactly what he said he thought you'd be doing in order to keep the business open and going, Except which is I just kind of taking that. what you need, but not more than that. So the one case I have in front of me, I don't have a case where he's counterclaiming you for profits and an accounting, which you could never do with this. Um, the only thing I have is your lawsuit against him for unpaid wages. That's you enforcing a contract to get paid a salary that you didn't get paid. You had no such contract by your own admission. There was never a situation where there's supposed to be unpaid wages. You're telling me that what happened instead was that you're supposed to get half of a business. I don't even know what the business is because he's under the table and you're under the table. Everybody's under the table until, and now all of a sudden it's pretty inconvenient to be under the table. But if it was good enough for you, it's good enough for me. And so I cannot enforce your contract that didn't exist according to your own words of unpaid wages. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Would have been better off in the moment. Well, Ms. Goss, the plaintiff has just stepped out of the courtroom. Just step right here. You heard the judge she to prove your to case. Are you kidding? She doesn't know how to read paperwork. Trust me, I would have been better off going to the court in New London. Come on. Look, she didn't steal any money from anybody. He wouldn't have a business if it weren't for her. All right. All right. Well, the plaintiff has ex exited the courtroom. She's a little upset. What's the situation with the store right now? The, it's the, still there? Yeah, the store is doing good. Um, but you owe rent, and you're, yes, the yes, landlord's yes, yes, after you for yes. that. Actually, yes, I took care of that. Everything is doing good. I'm back home. Everybody love me out there. I'm making money again. And we can see where it goes. So you're running the store back? Yes, okay, of course, cool. yeah. And you're not drinking anymore? Not drinking. Good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. That's Big a Daddy big deal. B's not drinking anymore. That's a, that's a big deal. Come on. Yeah, man, doing big things. Thank All right, you. congratulations. Thank Hope you. it works out for Bye. you. Bye. Okay, goodbye. Nice to meet you. Um, look. I, I want you guys to really hear me on this one. If you run any kind of a business, any kind of a business, whether, even if it's informal, you've got to keep records, written records of what's going in, what's coming out, especially money and inventory. It may sound like a pain in the butt to do now. I, I'm just telling you, you are asking for trouble if you do not do it. It's so critical to running a business. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.